Hey YouTube, Dan Otto here. So hit Legends, now I'm gonna do some more fun slash interesting things. This one I wanted to use an all 151 Pokemon, like level team. So uh, Scrafty is level 50, Galvantula is level 50, Umbreon is level 51 with the best buddy. So 151 uh, level with three Pokemon here. Let's get into it. The team is actually a pretty common team because um, I mean, Nidoqueen Double Dark, this backline is very common. Uh, so I just put in Galvantula and said Nick Queen. Still, you resist the counter users, but you have more, like not more trouble against. Yeah, I mean, you do have more trouble against the fairy because you don't resist it. But uh, I'm more worried about the counter users in the premiere as opposed to fairies right now. Quite honestly, I've, I've played almost two full days now, and I have not seen like I've seen like one fairy Pokemon. Um, so they're not that relevant right now. The team. Again, so if you haven't if you haven't used this line before, what you do is you basically need to draw out uh, a fairy or fighter with Umbreon. Umbreon is so tanky that you just kind of spam those last resorts or foul plays if you can, but mostly you're spamming last resorts because fighter and fairy resist dark. Um, and then your normally your Nidoqueen would take care of that, but now Galvantula will need to take care of that, and then Scrafty will go in the back. There is, so I went two and three with this team. I did one set, you're gonna see all five battles here. There's two problems with this team. So the first is Galvantula. So yes, it's nice against Pidgeot here. Uh, the problem is, um, it's very, for level 50 Pokemon, it's very glassy, like very glassy. I wanna actually just bring up, if I can, while this is on, I'm gonna just bring up the statistics of the Ultra League. Just Ultra League level 50, you have Galvantula, which is a hunt, and I mean, Umbreon is super tanky, so I don't wanna put that together, but like, I'll, I'll do Scrafting too, just give you other things. So Galvantula's def defense is like 120, and Stamina is 157, versus Umbreon, which is 214 and 194, but that's, Scrafty is a level 50, is 199 defense and 149 stamina. So their defense there is 79 above. Um, what are the level 50 Pokemon are there that I've used? Pidgeot. Pidgeot's a level 50 Pokemon, 142. So that's 22 defense higher. Right? So it is a very glassy level 50 Pokemon in this league. And you see it. You see it with some of these like moves where they're just like normal moves that are doing like over 50 percent and it's just like ooh, that's a lot of damage for a level 50 pokemon like the shadow ball if if they stay in here and land a shadow ball it's going to do like like those hexes are adding up if they land a shadow ball it's going to do like 70 percent and that's the, that's the problem with galvantula it's I've, i built it up it will have some play in this meta just because there are gel sense like i showed the other day um but again they're going to throw if i remember they show shadow ball yeah w over 70 percent now they can hex me down and I get to another move, now they're just gonna fully hex me down, right? So, real rough, I'm gonna probably switch out here into Umbra, and now I have a two shield that even if uh, I get hard punished here, I should be able to th use shield and spam. Yeah, so here's your, I was supposed to say, here's a fairy, but they are running Powder Snow, which is actually better, because then Scrafty is gonna have more play. Uh, yeah, so Gavancha is really glassy for level 50 Pokemon in this meta. There are flyers, uh, but like, Dragonite, which is half, like, takes neutral, like, out spams you and out bulks you. No, no, like, eh, mostly it out spams you. Um, these other Pokemon, like, I had a good matchup. Is it next matchup? I have Galvantula and Umbreon, where Lunge does super effective and two don't take out a Umbreon, yet their foul plays are taking me out in a couple. Like, it's just, I'm very disappointed <laughs> in Galvantula. And you think with all the Charizards and stuff, it'd have more play. Umbreon, Umbreon's interesting because Umbreon. Um, does what it's supposed to do. It doesn't really hit hard, but your main reason you're using it is for a sponge, right? And if I got into this matchup, okay, here with Charizard, like you take like a blast burn here and there and let, launch some foul plays. Um, so it's not bad. I think I have to try and catch here, and I do catch here, uh, which is huge. And I think they're gonna have to try and catch back, and I'm gonna be aware of that. Oh yeah, actually I know I do that because this is a subscriber. Um, is this the one? No, is this one that I just... Yeah, they're going to have to... I think they try and catch on the... Yeah, they come in with Jellicent, and then they know they have to try and catch on the A9. 
but I'm aware that they're going to try and catch, so I don't throw, and then i able to get the foul play off to take this out. So just that's just kind of recognition of win cons there. Uh, so yeah, Umbreon is your is your t tank. The thing is, like now there are so many level fifty Pokemon that can tank like Umbreon, but also hit harder. So Umbreon, so like Jelcent that I used in yesterday's video is a is a great example. My Jelcent's like level forty nine and a half. So level basically level 50, like this is it. You're gonna see like the foul plays do a ton of damage. Um, so like Jelsen's level 49 and can like just absorb a ton of damage, plus hits harder with the Shadow Balls and Ice Beams, right? Um, Pidgeot, same thing, like you have the Brave Bird Nuke and then it like hits okay, just, yeah, it hits Brave Bird Nuke and then again, Pidgeot's sort of a unique one there. Try to think of the other level 50s. It's just obviously like Umbreon is so defense heavy that you're not using it for an attacker. But I just find like there are now so many other Pokemon that are just as bulky that they're just as bulky that also hit harder. So Umbreon's kind of lost its edge because it was like before you can use it as a safe swap, um, just absorb so much damage and still do chip damage. But I feel like there's other Pokemon that now fit that role better. And Scrafty, I am once again saying do not use an Ultra League Premier. Uh, I used it my first set on Thursday, and I went 0-3 with it, and then I went 2-3 and in this set. And it's just that there are too many Charizards running around. I, and I got hit with Charizard once already, and I think I got hit with a Charizard on it again here. There's just too many Charizards running around in this meta for it to be strong and used so that would be my suggestion to not use it uh, but i mean if you can maybe cover your charizard weakness with like but i, I tried to cover it i covered it with swampert and um what was the first pokemon swampert and i'm blanking on my team from yesterday already <laughs> i've gone through another team already here see tomorrow anyways but i tried to cover it with like two weaknesses there and it's just like there's too many and it's too spammy with the wing attacks now So coming here, safe swap, they catch on a Dragonite. And this is where, like, I don't like this play from my opponent because it's a Shadow Dragonite at that. So now they're in, two, like, two foul play ranges. And I'm pretty sure I could even probably take a superpower from this range so I don't shield. So anyways, I'm going to take, I don't know if I take Switch in the ending here. Um, I maybe take Switch in the ending here. But they're, they're in big trouble. So it's, again, if you have, like, a... Shadow Dragonite is a little glassier. That's the only thing, right? Yeah, I let this go. And then I get a foul play off, so they're going to have to double shield or else I'm going to take switch. And either way, I'm going to be up two shields or I'm going to be up a shield and switch here. I think they double shield, yeah. So it's kind of just like, okay, I'll, I'll take that. And I assume Scrafty will be able to sweep even if it's a Charizard in the back here because I'm expecting maybe like a double flyer team. Uh, Clarion Stenfisk. Yeah. That's my guess, is there's like a Charizard or something in the back here. But we'll see what it is. Yeah, Dub yeah that, that makes sense. Clarence Stemphis, double flyer, it makes sense. But now I'm hoping with this foul play I can just... I got the advantage here that I'm just so far ahead on energy. And they're done on shield, so I can shield up once um, and get this out of here. But yeah, there's too many flyers. There's, between Dragonite and Charizards, those are both everywhere. Pidgeots are everywhere. You're going to get out beat by like Fighters and Machamp and Surfetch. I just don't think... And even in this matchup, they land an Earthquake here. I tried to catch. I think I lived this and I get a foul playoff anyways and, and end up... Yeah, this is a very, very close matchup. I remember it. 1 HP, get the foul playoff, come in here. Lunge, does nothing. But it lowers their attack. They have to throw and then I counter for the win. Uh, yeah, I honestly, I get it. I get that it's ranked high. I, I'm not seeing a ton of Steelixes in my ELO range. I saw one or two Steelixes so far. I've seen one or two Glare and Stunfist so far. I'm mostly seeing Charizards and Pidgeots and um, Dragonites, Como O. Like, I have no answer for this. <laughs> like, all three of these are, I have no answer for this. So, I am, this, this is just an immediate loss. I could just top left right now if I wanted to. Uh, 
so yeah, that would be my suggestions about these Pokemon. I would not use Scrafty because of all the flyers and the fighters. I would not use Galvantula because it is a very, very uh, uh, glassy level 50 Pokemon. Umbreon, again, I think it has play. But at this point, I probably still will just want to go like something like Jelcent, which can which can act as a safe swap and hit harder and flip switch easier. Like Umbreon has a tough time flipping switch in a lot of these situations. So that's the team, two and three. Um, not amazing, but not as bad as you're going to see on Monday. So after this, I was like, Nidoqueen, Double Dark, let's just go Nidoqueen. And then I'm like, Walrein, let's go with the full nerfed team. So the nerf team is Nidoqueen with the Poison Jab nerf, Walrein with the Icicle Spear nerf, and Politoed that, that from seasons earlier has the Weather Ball nerf. Um, and what you're going to see is me get absolutely destroyed. And it does come down to a lot of those moves. Have Like, had I got to, instead of going 6-6 six, six on Nidoqueen, if I went 5-5 five, five Poison Fang, I would have won a match there. Had I been able to get same thing with 5-5 five, five, Five five or five four ice skill spear. I would have won a couple matches. I won at least one there. So it, it's really interesting to like put them all on the team. And same thing like the two weather balls don't take even though I'm a shadow don't take out Swampert. So it was, just, it was a really interesting. I can do that now because again I've already hit legend, so I'm just gonna play around for a bit. Uh, but it was a very interesting like case study. I lost nine in a row and then I finally won one and I'm like okay that's enough. <laughs> so check that out just to see uh, in action. On Monday, and now I've got uh, the weekend to figure out what I want to run. Someone mentioned they do want to see some try hard open ultra teams because open ultra is on next week as well. So maybe I'll do a try hard open ultra uh, either Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, and that is basically it. So thanks for watching. Appreciate the thumbs up. Good luck on community day tomorrow. I have what I think is a really, really good analysis tomorrow of Neuvern Community Day. So check that out tomorrow morning. Um, I think it's good. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.